Krishna seems to be veering from his core focus of caste. They are, of course, being very silly. And to those who think they would engage with Zizek but not Ambedkar, I would say it's time to wake up. Unfortunately, in India, for the self-appointed intellectual class, both you, Zizek, Foucault, or Rancière, but not Ambedkar, is somebody to be engaged with. Academics in India are quick to invoke a Bodhu on social and cultural capital, but rarely Ambedkar. Strangely and unfortunately, it's been easier for me to get Zizek to engage with Ambedkar than to get an Indian academic who admires Zizek to read Ambedkar. It is a tragedy that Ambedkar's works have not been available in mainstream bookstores for more than 50 years after his death. While commercial publishers why to publish the works of Gandhi, Tagore, Bose, Vivekananda, Patel, Aurobindo, right, left, everybody, Ambedkar remains untouched. The Indian, in the Indian intellectual milieu, I think, is poorer for its disengagement with its combative thinker. Now, you would not have any further excuse for the non-availability of Ambedkar, for Navayana today proudly presents the first ever annotated edition of the Ambedkar speeches, Thus Spoke Ambedkar, Volume 1, A Stake in the Nation, edited by Bhagwan Das, who is a veteran chronicler of the Dalit movement. The book is just out. It's available from today. A stake in the nation, and the pun is intended. Now for the story of how and why Slavoj Zizek. Sometime in June 2009, I wrote to Slavoj apropos of his article on the design of toilets in Germany, France, and Britain, and the civilizational ideological implications of these designs. I told him that he must visit India and take a look at how we deal with shit. More than 1.2 million Dalits in India are still forced to do manual scavenging. They handle other people's shit with bare hands. 80% of those who do this job are women. Sewer workers in India enter a sewer pit with just a loin cloth. They are the true Gandhians, we may say. Only 18% of the 1.3 billion population in India has the luxury of a water closet facility in their toilets. What is the fate of the lakhs of Dalits forced to do sanitation work? At least 22,327 Dalits die doing sanitation work every year. That was my pitch with him. Slavoj got interested. Closer to his visit, we sent him about 15 books, including the book he didn't read, and a collection of Ambedkar's writings in the Manusmriti and a few documentary films on the issue of caste and manual scavenging. Two days ago, Zizek paid a visit to the Safai Karamchari Andolan office here in Delhi. As 3.59 days are left for the Commonwealth Games, the Safai Karamchari Andolan, SKA, has a target too, of ensuring that manual scavenging should be eradicated from India. It does not matter whether the stadia get built, the metro gets ready, or if the flyovers are done. They demand that if apartheid South Africa could be boycotted by other nations, the Commonwealth Games in India should be boycotted as well. I should think that not just the SKA, but the rest of civil society should make this demand. Speaking with Bezwada Wilson of Safai Karamchari Andolan, Slavosh said, among many things, what distinguishes humans from animals is that humans dispose their shit, but animals just shit. That in India, we have more than a million people of a specific community forced to dispose other people's shit, something Gandhi insisted they should do as a sacred duty without expecting any reward, tells us how huma, human we are. Since Lavoj intends to share his thoughts on Ambedkar, manual scavenging, shit, and Gandhi, I shall not say more on this. Now, how does Navayana pull this off? How do we survive in a market driven by corporate publishers who corner all the retail space? It's a mystery and miracle how an independent, unfunded press like Navayana survives. Even Zizek wondered how. He asked me if I had a rich uncle or a father like most communists do. Sorry, no such luck. Navayana does not have funding from rent collectors like George Soros or Bill Gates, nor do we have manufacturers of inflammable cars helping us out. But to help us carry on, I would urge you to become members of the Navayana Book Club. I mean, since many of you didn't get seats, those who got the seats would have picked up the Navayana Book Club membership announcement and how to become a member. The Navayana Book Club membership means that you pay rupees 10,000 and get all our books, the backlist, the forward list, everything we do, including the film on Zizek we are making, Zizek in India, we're just covering as many lectures of his and his other engagements as possible. So it's going to be cut into a DVD. And even that, whatever Navayana does, reaches you at your doorstep, home delivered. I see this as a, I, I ask you to see this as an opportunity to become a stakeholder in Navayana. And there's also this offer that you buy all the four books in the other heading series, the new series, you get them for 1,000 rupees, get a huge whopping discount. It's 1,000 books for four books. Finally, I would like to thank Habitat Center for agreeing to host this lecture, partners in this Zizek in India program, Sarai, ICSSR, EFLU in Hyderabad, and Kochi Life. 
Navayana's designer Akila Seshasai, I mean, Slavoj really liked the cover of his book. My printer Sanjeev, staff at Navayana Raju and Aparajita, volunteers for this event Kuhu, Paroma, Shatam and Bani, our distributor IPDA who are making the sale of books possible here. And as Zizek implied yesterday, I would like to thank myself. Now enjoy. Nivedita will respond after Slavoj finishes speaking. It will be for about 15 minutes. Slavoj speaks. I, I'm not telling him how long. There won't be a Q&A. It's not possible because it's a public lecture. Thank you. Uh, I hope this works. Thank you very much. I am really, really grateful and honored to be here, but it's in my nature to be evil, so thanking you, I cannot but begin with a couple of nasty rejoinders, <laughs> remarks to you. First, you lied a little bit, no? There is no father, but you told me there is a wife who supports you a little bit, and I like this because in the West, I know quite a couple in England, in Greece, of leftist presses where, you know, you have a crazy wife who wants to uh, uh, annoy her husband, who is a rich manager, and husband allows her as a play. Here you have half a million to play your leftist dreams. At least you do it here in a feminist way that the wife gives the money, no? Point two, this brings me already to the first theoretical point. I loved that little misunderstanding when you were silent for three, four seconds and it was a properly Stalinist misunderstanding. People were not sure should we applaud or not, you know. <laughs> Is this the silence where Comrade Stalin signals now you can have spontaneous applause? <laughs> or should I put it, no? Uh, and this is already, quite seriously, brings me to my first point, just an introductory remark, because uh, one, the first lesson when we try to locate ideology, now I'm offering a variation of what I developed already yesterday, is that usually we perceive our social life in this in this way. We obey customs and so on, but from time to time, it's too restraining, all the rules, and you explode, no? Some, in some either orgy or violence, whatever, that's the spontaneity. You need a little bit of fresh air to break the rules. I claim precisely these violations, transgressions, are regulated, had to be learned. There is nothing spontaneous about them. Listen, I dare you, I hope we are the same humans, no? so I dare you if you had the same experience as mo all of my friends when I ask them. Look, uh, let's take even these most ordinary transgressions. Do you remember, if you do, if you do it, I'm an alcoholic, not for religious reasons, uh, purely as a Stalinist, I think if you get drunk, you are not attentive, you get, you smile, you get to good, and then the enemy can attack. That's totally. <laughs> but uh, remember, how did it probably happen when you had your first drink? In a company with other boys and somebody told you, you know, parent, uh, our adults drink this, and then you tried it, but you said, but this is bitter, horrible, and so on. And then you were taught, no, no, you should enjoy this, and so on. So again, it's... You do it through imitating your peers and you have to le literally to learn to enjoy it. I mean, let's be frank. If you want pleasure, you don't drink whiskey, you drink mango lassi or whatever, no? I mean, <laughs> and it's the same with, uh, for example, with smoking. Admit it, the first cigarette, <laughs> you start coughing and so on, it's horrible. This is the crucial lesson, especially transgressions are, uh, especially transgressions are regulated. So again, just the final, more serious thing about your reaction to your nice introduction. Yes, I did uh, discover by going through the package that you sent me, Ambedkar, and I was quite fascinated by his work. It put so many things into proper perspective that if I will be able a little bit to play the role of what role? You know, often with nations, there is nothing racist about it. It goes even more the same for us in the West. You need a foreigner to bring you to yourself. You know, to tell, or at least 
to help you, although with Ambed Carr, I'm not saying I'm discovering him for, for you, but nonetheless, if I will play a little bit this role of bringing you back to Ambed Carr, to show you how, you know, I would like to live not in the world where somebody reacts and the same goes with different names, of course, for other countries, like, oh, this is our local theoretician, who cares, I want big international names. I would like to live in the world where some, where Ambedkar would be the proper transgression, the real thing. Oh, you want to read again that Foucault, that Heidegger, but you know Ambedkar is the, and he deserves this. I will be really, this is no bad joke, irony, whatever, honored if I am, if I will maybe help a little bit.